So I haven't done a video for a while and I thought I'd uh, kick off this year with a uh, bit of retro tech and you can see it's uh, just started to build it up here. It's the SN7648 now at 9 sound chip uh, uh, way from way back in the 80s. But before I get into that, I thought I'd do a quick channel update. Uh, one of the main reasons that you haven't seen a video for a while is uh, this uh, this thing here. So uh, my wife was kind enough uh, over the Christmas uh, break to uh, buy me one of these. It's a uh, 50 watt uh, laser cutter. And uh, I've kind of rekindled one of my old passions, which is basically building RC planes. And you can see there's one here and there's another one here. These are little sort of park flyers. I've always been interested in RC and, uh, you know, I thought I'd uh, basically uh, use the laser cutter, uh, get download plans off the net, um, uh, cut those plans into balsa and plywood, uh, and then uh, and then do some planes. So it hasn't. That's not quite the content of this channel. So I didn't post any kind of videos of that process. Um, if anyone has any interest, though, I'm more than happy to sort of post up some videos on uh, kind of the way I do it. Uh, I'm obviously uh, still learning a lot about the uh, laser cutter. There's plenty of channels online that uh, um, that um, dive in deep to uh, laser cutters. I'll, I'll uh, include one as a uh, gentlemen, the, the the channel name is Saba Multimedia. It's probably one of the best ones out there. But anyway, I thought I'd just uh, sort of provide some reasoning why you haven't seen a few videos from me for a while. But uh, let's uh, get right into the uh, SN76489 now. So let's start with a bit of history on the SN76489 uh, IC and. Uh, I've included uh, the, uh, the sort of the uh, canonical manual here for the for the IC, um, and I'll include a link to that uh, below. But uh, as you can see here, it's a sound generator IC produced by Texas Instruments, um, starting around in the 1980s. Uh, it features, as you can see here, three independent uh, programmable tone generators, as well as a single uh, noise generation channel. It was used as uh, a sound IC for, uh, amongst uh, many things, the TI-994A, uh, the BBC Micro, IBM PC Junior, as well as a variety of uh, Sega consoles and arcade uh, games. The IC itself is a 16-pin uh, dip package, as you can see right here. And uh, just going through the, uh, the, um, uh, the pins, so you have D0 through D7. Uh, they, they are the data, that's the data bus, and it's important to know that D0 is the most significant bit. So re really this is, the, uh, this is the seventh bit, and this is the zeroth bit here, but uh, it goes from D0 through to D D7. Uh, CE, or OE, as it's down here, is the chip enable, and uh, you bring that low to enable the chip functionality. WE is write enable. Again, you bring that low when uh, you have data to write to the IC. The clock is the external reference clock, uh, and I'll uh, show you how I'm driving that. I'm actually driving this uh, through PWM uh, from, from the uh, uh, STM32. Uh, typically, though, it's uh, driven using an external crystal, crystal oscillator. We have the audio out here on pin 7. Uh, now that isn't capable of driving a speaker, so you do have to have uh, some audio uh, amplification going on there. And then finally, VCC here is the uh, the five volt uh, supply. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the circuit that I've uh, that I've got going here. Uh, I'm using one of these uh, so-called Blue Pill STM32 F401CE ICE, uh, um, microcontrollers here. Uh, to drive the SN76489. It's actually a bit of a pain because obviously this is a 3.3 volt IC. The uh, 76489 uh, is a 5 volt TTL uh, logic uh, IC. So I have to run any communications that I'm doing through it through these uh, this array of level shifters right here. So for the external clock, and let me just move this out of the way a bit. I actually started using uh, an external crystal oscillator here um, that I had lying around. Uh, this actually works fine, so the kind of the pin order is 5 volts input here, the crystal oscillator output here, this pin's not connected, and then this pin uh, goes to ground. You want to get round, that round the right way, you will blow these up if you, uh, if you apply power to the wrong, uh, to the wrong pin. Uh, this was working fine. 
But I thought I'd uh, try running it uh, with the PWM from the uh, from the uh, STM, and it worked fine. Even though this is a 3.3 volt uh, PWM signal here in here, it uh, it works fine with the um, uh, with the SN76489. Now, one of the interesting things is is you can't really run through this through this type of level shifter anything more than about a 500 kilohertz signal through it. Uh, what starts to happen is instead of going to the full five volts, this starts to to cut off. So I'd originally ran run the PWM signal through here, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't giving me five volts anyway. But that's kind of something to to to, to remember here is these level shifters don't work with uh, with high frequencies. So what else have we got going on here? So you can see all the here's all the uh, the signals from the um, the STM32, and I've got them down here. So uh, I've got D2 connected to PA5, D1 to PA4, and so on and so forth. Now I'll include uh, a link to the GitHub repo for this so that you can see the project that I was using here. But uh, but uh, basically all these pins here go to their respective pins on the STM through the uh, level shifters right here. So what else have I got here? Uh, you can have a look here, as I, as I mentioned, the um, the audio output cannot drive a speaker, so you do have to run it through uh, uh, some sort of audio amplification. I'm using the uh, LM386 circuit that I've uh, used elsewhere here. Uh, it's pretty solid and it uh, it drives a speaker very nicely. I am actually, it's not so too clear on the diagram here, but I am actually running that through a 50k pot here, just as a simple volume control. Just one other thing to, to cover here, I am using uh, an FTDD, FTDI um, board here just to communicate to uh, PA9 and PA10, which is the USART on the uh, STM32. I actually do want to do some input and output uh, on there. And, uh, you know, in this bare bones sort of bare metal programming, you don't have a, uh, a serial monitor by default. Uh, these uh, FTDI boards are very cheap. They're available online. Um, and then obviously this USB goes off to the uh, off to your laptop, and then that creates a virtual uh, a virtual COM port that you can uh, uh, that you can see. And I'll, I'll show that uh, working later on. Okay, so enough talking. Uh, let, let's just hear this uh, thing in operation. So I'll, I'll turn this on, but just to explain what you're going to hear is going to play a, a succession of uh, of chords of varying frequencies. First chord uh, C major, and then D minor. That kind of sort of demonstrate the uh, the three uh, the three ch the three channels you have there. So anyway, you'll you'll hear uh, the C major and the D minor chord uh, four times in succession with with varying frequency. So let me turn that on, and you can hear that. I'll shut up talking. Turn the volume up a bit. So there you can hear those uh, those two different chords being played, uh, and you can really hear the the, the different channels there. Uh, we'll we'll get to look at the actual uh, output signal, but it is a surprisingly messy output signal. Uh, one of the things I was uh, thinking I would get out of this would would be uh, sort of a nice clean square wave. You don't get anything like that, but uh, that's right up. Uh, let's move on to the code itself, and uh, we'll uh, take it. Okay, so as I usually do, I've built the code uh, using the STMIDE workbench, and all the code that you're going to see here is up on the GitHub repo link down below. So let's have a look at uh, how the IC is programmed. So there's three basic interfaces uh, that, that are available. So the first one is uh, the primary interface that's used to set the channel and tone. The second interface uh, deals with the, uh, the noise source. Uh, and then the final interface is the attenuator. So basically, uh, the attenuator is used to control the uh, uh, the attenuation for each of the channels. So the first interface here is uh, a double byte send that sets the tone for a given channel. The register address contains the specific channel, so it's zero for channel zero, two for channel one, and four for channel two. And then that's followed by 10 bits of uh, frequency information. 
Uh, and basically the way that you calculate the actual frequency of the tone is you take the reference clock, so in my case it's 4 megahertz, and then you divide that by 32 times this value right here. So let's walk through an example here, and I've got uh, I've got it set up down here for let's say I wanted a uh, a one kilohertz tone. So here's the uh, here's the, uh, the the math right here. The ten bits that I need is four million divided by thirty two times a thousand. So that comes out to one hundred and twenty five, and in binary that's one 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 zero one. So what I do is I take the last four bits and that goes into the first byte. So you can see here that here's the last four bits. And the first byte also contains a leading one. Um, and that's always true for setting the uh, channel tone. And then the next three bits contain the uh, channel that you're interested in. So in this case, it's channel zero. So I load that with a zero. For channel one, it would be a two. So I'd have uh, a one bit here. And for channel 2 it would have one bit here. Now byte 2 contains the remaining or the sixth most significant bits here. So in this case I've left out the three leading zeros here so it's just 111. One, one. So basically I would load that up. This is, this is all that matters for, for byte 2 here. And so byte 1 is 8B and byte 2 is 07. Sending that will set a one kilohertz tone on channel one. So let's now have a look at the code that, uh, that actually enables that. So this send function here is called twice for the first byte and the second byte. And you can see here that basically it unpacks that byte, picks off each of the bits, sets the appropriate STM32 pin to high or low. And then once that's done, it sets this, the write enable pin to low. Uh, and when that happens, that indicates to the uh, SN76, uh, uh, I keep forgetting this, 76489, that indicates that data is ready to read from the, uh, from the microcontroller. Now, one of the things that you're supposed to do, and this is what the manual says, is basically uh, pull this RE pin, uh, which is pin 4 on the uh, SN76489 uh, IC and when that goes high that means the write has completed and you can continue. I wasn't able to get that working. Um, so I did poll it. It did actually return a uh, high value after the write year uh, but uh, it you know basically malfunctioned after that. So what I, what I did is I hacked it by just in, in introducing a one uh, millisecond delay. And I've looked around and, and, and that seems to be the kind of the general pattern for other people who have, who have done this. So uh, not quite sure what's going on here. Now this, uh, th this pin on the IC is open collector and I did have a pull up, res pull up resistor configured in the uh, RE pin, but still it didn't work. So not quite sure what's going on there. Anyway, uh, this seems, excuse me for a moment, this seems to be uh, a reliable mechanism uh, of, of, invoking, uh, of invoking that set tone uh, interface. And then finally, when you're done, you set the write enable pin back to high again, and that uh, sets the uh, IC back up uh, for the next uh, write. Okay, so we've encoded that, uh, that function here in, in terms of pl his play, and it just does that computation, ref clock divided by 32 times frequency, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, I've just uh, got it to play some simple monotonic scales here, so let's uh, hear that. So here's the... So here's the scales here. So I've just got it to play... Uh, Play those, uh, play those, I guess two octaves, three octaves worth of uh, worth of scales there. So that's uh, kind of simple playing. You've heard the uh, chords before. Uh, here's the chord that here's the code that you heard before for the chords. Um, so why don't we do that next? Hold on a moment. Okay, so here's the code the code uh, playing chords here. Um, uh, so here's uh, for each of the uh, channels I'm playing. Uh, this is uh, C, E, G, C, E, G. I'm sorry, I'm not a musician at all, so forgive me. Um, so basically it plays those three tones together on the three separate channels. 
and then the stop function just calls the attenuation uh, function to to silence those and then I'm doing uh, uh, I think this is DAC or, so, or something like that but basically so well, why don't we play those and uh, let's listen to these Uh, that demonstrates uh, the playing of the channels together. So what I might move on to now is the uh, is the noise generator as the uh, as the final piece of the puzzle here. Um, I have covered the let, let me just cover the briefly the the attenuator function. So basically the attenuator function uh, acts in a similar fashion. So basically the registers for the uh, attenuation. There's actually a bit of a misprint here. Uh, so zero is uh, channel 1 frequency and 001 is channel 1 attenuation and that goes in this spot right here so 1001 is uh, tells it to to uh, uh, instructs it to attenuate channel uh, channel 0 and then the data here contains the actual uh, the actual bit value of the attenuation and that's up here uh, bear with me so basically a zero is no attenuation and then you can go all the way to complete attenuation f is uh, complete attenuation for the for the channel but anyway let's move on to the uh, uh to the uh, noise uh, control and that'll about wrap this up okay so as promised uh let's take a look at the output here uh and just so you can see i'm actually probing on pin 5 of the LM386. So that's on the output side of the LM386. So let's have a look at that. So as you can see, that is an incredibly messy uh, square wave. So let me just uh, stop that so we can uh, drill into the signal, turn this down a little bit. So uh, there it is in all its glory and uh, it's, it's a fascinating... So this is sort of a modulated... Uh, this is the modulated... Um, uh, output from there as you can see it forms that very rough square wave from the uh, make sure you can see that I've got my arm in the way my apologies for that so there's the uh, there's the output there and obviously this uh, this square wave here this is the frequency that you're hearing uh, but underneath it there's all that uh, uh, basically all that uh, all that junk there so uh, it's by no means a, uh, a clean square wave. Uh, it sounds okay to human ears, I guess. Uh, but uh, anyway, I thought you'd uh, find that uh, that interesting. Let's just uh, let's just play that uh, one more time for giggles, so we can see it uh, see it in action. Bear with me. Sorry, a little bit of a technical hiccup there. Let me, uh, so let's see that once more time. There's that uh, square wave. So this is the actual frequency in there. And the actual sort of that carrier frequency is around about 400 uh, kilohertz. Um, okay, so let's just, uh, for giggles, uh, let's see it uh, on the, uh, this is going through um, the microphone uh, amplifier that I built up uh, a while ago. So, uh, and that's got some uh, low pass filtering on it, audio low pass filtering on it. So let's, uh, let's just see what the waveforms look like. So that's, uh Interesting stuff. Uh, I mean, obviously, you're far from a clean signal there, even from a far from a clean square wave. So, uh, so interesting stuff. Anyway, uh, let's uh, let's get have a look at the uh, the noise uh, uh, component, the noise generator next. Okay, so there's two uh, types of noise that are supported in the uh, in the IC. There is periodic noise and white noise, and to give you a feel for what they sound like differently here. So, what I'm doing is playing some white noise. Um, 
And then you can actually control what the tone of the noise is. So this is basically anon 512 is this, the sort of the frequency of the noise. And then I wait a second and then I play, so a couple of seconds and then I pe play periodic noise. So let me uh, just reset the board. So there's the white noise. And there is the periodic nodes, so you can see the, uh, the difference between those two. And so the final feature I'm going to demonstrate in, in this is uh, you can associate, associate the uh, tone of the noise with channel 2. So uh, with this command here, basically the, uh, uh, I set the tone on channel 2, and then I attenuate that to, to zero volume, and then the noise that I emit will be whatever the tone on the on ch channel two. And uh, what I'm first going to do is do a loop where I'm playing the periodic noise and then a loop playing the white noise and you'll see the difference between the two. So here we go. First is periodic and then is white. And that uh, second one, the white noise, really sounds like those uh, 80s arcade games, uh, the sort of gun firing and that sort of stuff. So anyway, I, I hope you enjoyed this um, uh, this uh, quick video on the SN76489. Uh, I had quite a bit of, quite a bit of fun uh, uh, making it, so uh, I do hope you enjoy it. I'll include all the links to the code and to the uh, um, yeah to to some uh, information on this IC. Uh, I hope you uh, get a chance to have a play around with it. Uh, I'll also include a link. I got these ICs uh, off eBay. They were like uh, twenty cents each for for for. Uh, for 10 of them so uh, a lot of fun to play around with i've already blown up a few of them so but uh, 20 cents a pop you can afford to anyway that's all for now hope you enjoyed the video